The old estate of Tours lies in East Ayrshire, near Kilmores. Part of the policies, that is the lands of the estate, are known as the Tour Plantation, and this runs down following the Tour Burn until it joins the Carmel. A gap in the wall opposite the lodge entrance to Tour House, which used to have a gate, has beyond it a path that leads down towards the Ladies' Well and to the old hamlet of Path Foot. The Tour Plantation has clearly had a long history of woodland cover, for the number of plants grow here that are, that are characteristic of old woods, such as the bluebells, pignut, Ransom's wild garlic, tuberous comfrey, and several others, probably one of the best bits of woodland left in Camor's area. The name Tour or Tower probably comes from the ancient castle belonging to the de Morville family. This lay on the track running up to Jock's Fawn Farm in what was then Carmel Woods. Nothing is now left of it, it's been entirely robbed of its stone, though there were people still alive in the 1870s who could remember playing amongst the ruins when they were children. Close to the old site of Pathfoot Hamlet lies the Lady's Well. This apparently once had an arched stone entrance. Water in those days was unsafe to drink from the streams because of pollution from cattle and so on, so it was very common to have water taken from wells from springs. The well may have supplied water to those who lived and worked at the old collegiate church that lay across the burn to the west. There could have been a dozen or more people who were located here. Later it may have served the little hamlet of Pathfoot, and finally we know that the Thindleys of Tour House used to treasure the water as is always abundant and cool. So the name the Lady's Well may refer to the Virgin Mary, or could even refer to Mrs Findlay of Tour, who is often referred to as Lady Findlay. Access to the well's water seems at one time to have been restricted. You can make out where there appears to be a, a gate across the entrance. The stonework of the well is suggestive that it's robbing that is old stone taken from the old collegiate church across the way. So at one time the well may have been exposed to the, to the open air. Close to the well on the eastern side, the woodland extends partly into the field. And in this area, there are various lumps and bumps that are suggestive of foundations of old buildings. This is where the old hamlet of Path Foot once stood. There were two or three thatched cottages here, presumably some small outbuildings. A map of the 1750s shows a small group of houses here and marks it as yards, suggesting that some form of farming community. Later, in Duncan McNaught's book about Camors in 1912, mentions that people could remember their grandparents talking about the hamlet, which would date it probably back to about the 1850s. Another indication that there used to be houses here is a garden escape, that is a non-native plant, known as the lesser periwinkle. It covers quite a bit of the area near the well, suggesting it's been growing as an escape for quite some years. The original access track to Path Foot lay slightly to the south of the existing path. This wouldn't have been a quiet area at the time. There was a path running all the way down to Woodhill or Woodle Quarry and further on to Knock and Tipper. Also the old manse lay to the south. It may be that these were servants of the, of the minister or possibly farmers or possibly a combination of both. There was a tower of sorts lying to the west of the present church, close to Kirk Falls. This sadly had to be demolished because it was, it was unsafe. It was probably accommodation for those associated with the collegiate church. Also, the, the existing dovecot may have been originally another former building associated with the college. A local legend has it that Hugh de Morville, 
was associated in some way with the murder of Thomas of Becket in 1170 at Canterbury Cathedral, once occupied this tower, is that he was there during the building of Kewinney Abbey. However, the, the known facts may be, may be at variance with this story. The bell mound at the west end of the church, so-called because that's where the person stood who was ringing the bell of the services, this overlooks the area which was once gardens and also an orchard. And down to the south lies where Path Foot and where the Lady's Well still sits. <laughs> 